In nearly all programs, we need a way to organize the data we're working with, and we've seen that we can assign data to identifiers, but we're often working with so much data that it, it would be cumbersome or essentially impossible to assign a unique identifier to every piece of data. So that brings us to the topic of lists. So let's provide an introduction to lists. Certainly you're familiar with lists in your everyday life. You can have a to-do list, a grocery list, maybe a list of colleges, classes, cars, and your list may be sorted or unsorted. And one thing that makes a list a list is that every element or every item, and we'll use the words element and item interchangeably, has a position within the list. There's a first element, a second element, a third element, and so on. And the items of the list form a kind of sequence. Python allows us to create lists of our own, and it's very easy to do. We merely write an open bracket, then all the items, and each item is in the form of an expression. Then the items are separated by commas, and we close down the list with a closed bracket. So here's an example. We can write the integer 1, the string 2, maybe the expression 1 plus 1 plus 1, and then how about 8 divided by 2, and then a closed bracket to terminate the list. And hitting return, Python returns that list to us where we get the integer 1, the string TWO, the integer 3, and the float 4.0. Recall that literals are the simplest form of an expression. So every item or element that we wrote was in the form of an expression initially, but those expressions are evaluated. So when we had the sum of 1 plus 1 plus 1, what actually was put in as the element of the list was whatever that expression evaluated to. So it evaluated to the integer 3. Now this is an example of an inhomogeneous list. And inhomogeneous lists consist of elements of different types. In contrast to that, when we have a homogeneous list, then all the items have the same type. Okay, so that list that I wrote above is an inhomogeneous list. Let's create a homogeneous list of just integers. And as you might guess, we can assign lists to identifiers. So let's use the identifier x list and say that is equal to the list consisting of 4, 3, 2, 5, 6, let's go with 10, maybe negative 12, 100, minus 17, and 43. And that's the end of our list. There's nothing that says I have to use the word list, L-I-S-T, in the identifier that I associate with a list. I've just done that here to remind me when I see x list, hey, that identifier is associated with a list. Now, what is the type of x list? Let's check it out. Let's use the type function and say, type function, tell us the type of x list. And it tells us it's a list. And let's see what happens when we try to print x list. Well, we just get the list back. So we see all the items in the list, and again, surrounded by brackets. If we just put the identifier for the list on a line by itself in the interactive environment and hit return, we also see the complete list. The len function, or I'll probably call it the length function, is something that's very handy. We'll have plenty of occasion to use it, and it will return the length of its argument. In other words, the number of elements in a list. And here we see there are 10 elements in this list. And we can actually, as something of an aside, use the same function, the length function, with strings. So if we say hello world as the string argument to length, it will tell us that that string had 11 characters in it. Now we've discussed operator overloading where the operation associated with a symbol depends on the operands. Can we use the plus symbol to add to lists? Well, let's check it out. Let's take this x list, the plus sign, and then maybe the list 99, 999, and 9999. And 
that worked. So what we got was the concatenation of these two lists. Let's recall that command. I'll go to the beginning here. And I will assign whatever that addition return to the identifier Z list. And now if I print Z list, I see it consists of the concatenation of those two lists. But the X list is unchanged. We'll stop there, and in the next video, we'll explore some of the methods that Python provides for working with lists.